Susie and welcome to Create and Craft with Artisan. It's great to see you. I hope this day finds you well. Today I'm going to show you how to make paper clay from simply shredded paper, flour and water and a bit of salt. That is literally all you need and yet with that mixture you can make some really fine objects. So let's get stuck in and have some fun. So in this bowl I've got 100 grams of shredded paper, it's basically about a bowl full, and I've added to it a litre of very hot water, hot as you dare. Now you can leave that overnight if you want to, but you really don't have to, despite what a lot of these recipes will tell you. You can just leave it for an hour and then get stuck straight in, because if you've got a potato masher, you can start to break up that paper pulp with your potato masher. Just do that for a couple of minutes before you start blending with an electric blender. And that'll be absolutely fine. Now, we're filming this on the top floor of our craft studio here in Harrogate. There seems to be a plane going over right now, so my apologies if you can hear that. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Right, so here I've got my stick blender, or you could use an ordinary blender with a jug and just add this in batches. Do you ask permission first? And uh, to start to blend. simple. So you're going to blend that for about five minutes. Um, the finer you blend it, the finer your clay will be at the end. So it depends if you want to make something very fine or very textured, how long you blend it for. If you've got the patience to blend it for a good five minutes, it's a good idea. When you finish blending it, you will have something that looks like this in a bigger quantity. You can see there's quite a lot of water in there and so just get yourself a jug or another bowl and a sieve and just tip that in there to get out most of the water. You're going to reduce the volume of the water that you originally added by half basically but to do that you're going to have to squeeze out what feels like nearly all the water because so much of it will still be retained in the fibres that you really can't get out by squeezing. So just keep on doing this until you've reduced most of the water um, if you want to be precise about it, if you've added a litre of water, you want to end up with half a litre back in your jug at the end. And that will give you uh, the right sort of consistency of paper pulp. You want a little bit of water left in it because that's what's going to make the glue when you add the flour in a minute. So when you've finished, you'll end up with something that looks a bit like that. Or, I'll show you in bigger quantity here something that looks a bit like this. So I've reduced my water by half, now I'm going to add my flour. And I've got here just over half a cup of flour, it's 100 grams, so same quantity by weight as my paper. Of course the volume of 100 grams of paper is a lot more than the volume of 100 grams of flour, so you end up with a lot more paper than flour. So I'm just going to squidge this together and just really enjoy squidging that. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of ordinary table salt, which I've already measured. The reason you're adding the salt is because it's going to preserve it and stop the flour from going off. So if you wanted to, you could put this in a sealed box in the fridge and it would keep there all summer. You could use it for a really long time and it won't go off. Um, you could add a bit of food colouring to it and you could essentially use it like Play-Doh and just have fun doing all sorts of moulding with it and putting it back in the fridge when you've finished. So you just want to keep on moulding that. I've now covered myself in flour and water and paste, but that is fine. I'm just going to get a cloth and get that off my hands. Obviously at this point you'd go to the tap and you'd give your hands a proper wash. So you will end up with something like this once you've finished mixing in all of your flour. And as you can see, that's just really, really nice to work with. And it's, it's really not unlike working with any kind of clay that you might buy in a packet in the shops, but this you have made yourself with materials that you've probably already got in your home for just a few pennies. So what can you make with this? All sorts of exciting things. If you want your things that you've made to dry relatively quickly, I recommend that you don't make them much thicker than your thumb. Um, because otherwise it will take quite a long time to dry. Um, so, for example, we've made these really lovely paper mache bowls. And as you can see, they're, they're nice and thin, but once they dry, they really are rock hard. I use mine for storing my earrings in. These have been made by Stephen in Ecuador at our project there. And to do that, you just want to get yourself a bowl, 
put plenty of Vaseline on the inside of it or just line it with a piece of cling film and then get your clay and just press that into there like that and keep pressing it till you've got a nice thin layer and you just want to keep going until the whole thing is completely covered with your air drying clay and then just leave that in the sun or on the radiator until the following day and it should be dry day and a half at most and you'll have a bowl which you can sit out of your mold because of the Vaseline or the cling film that's in there and then you can paint it beautifully and you'll have a really lovely bowl. Now if you want to make a bowl and you want to make a creature of some description you can do that. I've got a couple of different types of creatures here that I've made and these ones here are for a hook a fish game and you can see here I've got starfish and I've got goldfish and I made these just yesterday and as you can hear they really are rock hard and that's because I baked them in the oven rather than leaving them to air dry. So that's very simple to do. Simply get yourself a board or just a plastic tablecloth over your table is absolutely fine. Get some of your clay and then just roll it into a bit of a ball, squidge it down on your surface like that till it's about just over half a centimetre thick and then just get an ordinary table knife and you can cut out the shape that you want to make. So I'm just going to very, very quickly cut a fish out of this one to show you. I'm just going to do it quite fast because I know you want to get on and make things. You don't want to be sitting watching this video for too long. So just cut out your shape, remove the excess like that. So nice and easy to work with this. It's just great. There we go. And then just use your fingertips to go around the edges of your shape that you've just cut out and make it a bit neater. Now I want to give my fish a couple of fins so I'm going to get some extra clay and just stick those onto there like that. So I'm just doing this very very quickly but you can take much more time over if you want to and make something that's really rather fine and beautiful. So there we go, I've got my fins in place, I've got the tail there, I'm going to squeeze that down a bit more and then I just want to give him some gills, so just do that like that and a little eye, so a little tiny bit of clay, stick that on there and then I'm just going to quickly put some texture onto the tail like that and to do the texture on the starfish I just use a straw and just kind of dipped all over it to make those little tiny circles I hope you can see on there. So there we go, there is our very quick fish, so you can take your time over it if you want to and then just slide your fish off there, get yourself a baking tray with a bit of baking paper on it and just use your knife, slide off your fish, put him onto your baking paper and there you go. He is now ready to go in the oven. Now if you want to make your fish into a hooker fish game uh, then you're going to want to get a um, paper clip just open it out like that and just slip the end into your fish like that and then when he is dry that will be really nice and strong you'll be able to use him for a hooker fish game. Um, I'm just going to put him in the oven for about an hour between 50 and 80 degrees, so just nice and low, and that will just dry the clay out completely and you'll be able to paint him and use him as part of your game. And it's very easy to make a fishing rod just with a stick from the garden, a piece of wool or string, and another paper clip to make a hook, and you can have great fun with those. You could put different numbers on the back maybe, make it more of a competition, and challenge all the people in your house to see who is the best fisherman. So, if you don't want to make a fish but you want to make a bird, which you particularly might want to do if you made one of our paper mache bird houses from one of our previous videos, and that is super super simple as well. Um, here's one that I made earlier of this little blue guy here. I'm just going to sit him on the ladder there that's on my birdhouse. Now to make one of these you simply want to get a bit of clay about the size of a small ping pong ball. It depends how big you want to make your bird of course. And then just squidge your bird into this sort of shape. 
So you want a little beak at the front and a bit of a tail shape at the back and just keep on moulding that until you're happy with the shape and then get yourself another paper clip that you've partly opened out like that and just slide the paper clip into your bird so that you've got something with which to put your bird onto your birdhouse or onto a little perch when it's finished. Then just put that onto your baking tray in the oven, just like with the fish. It'll take a little bit longer to cook because it's that little bit thicker. And when it comes out of the oven, you should have something like this. Then all you want to do is give it a coat of paint. I've painted this one all red all over with a slightly lighter tummy, little beak and some eyes. And then I'm just going to get a glue stick. My apologies that my hands are still covered in paper pulp, but I'm sure you won't mind. Um, and just put some glue on the end like that. And some feathers that I've cut to size. Now, if you haven't got feathers in the house, you could quite simply um, use felt or fabric um, that you could cut into shape or even coloured paper. And that would be absolutely fine. So I'm just sticking my wings on the side now like that. And who'd have thought that this lovely little guy is just made from pulped recycled paper and flour and water. There you go. And because we've got the salt in that mixture and we've baked it rock hard, he will last for years and years and years and uh, just bring lots of joy to your home. So I'm just going to pop him onto there like that. Oops. <laughs> there you go. You can see the effect. So really hope that you have enjoyed this video <laughs> enjoy making your paper birds obviously you'll have time to put them more securely onto their perches um, and uh, do give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it do have a look at our website um, if you would like feathers or paint or any other things that you see in this video and you don't happen to have them in the house you can get cr uh, kids craft kits on our website and you can also find the beautiful crafts that have been made by our differently able artisans in Ecuador and Peru or find out, out, find out about our weekly craft workshops for people with disabilities here in the UK. Have a great time making your creatures and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.